right, now that I got my shit where I need it to be, welcome in to Toons Brothers. We got Scotty, we got Darren. And Man, I really you guys are so low. What? I'm trying I to show up here in your phone. <laughs> I don't feel like talking a whole lot. So, Scott, what are we doing? He's well, you can't you. hear me? He's ignoring you. I can, but you're y'all are low, man. Who's low? Your volume. I can't hear you that well. How about now? That's a little better. What do you mean? Turn your fucking speakers up. Talk, Darren, see if we can hear you. Can you hear me, butthead? Beavis? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, it was on your end. Are you set? Right. Are you good? That's right. That's right. This is yeah. this is quality production right here, people. All right, yes. what are we doing, Scotty? <laughs> we are going to dive in. Either my, it's either my second or third favorite by this band. Uh, we're going a little on the heavier side this time, but not too bad. I mean, a lot of people think of Megadeth as a slayer-ish type and yeah they can get that way on some of their albums but it's countdown to extinction yeah i know it's glare but a damn good album a rocking album great riffs um i've always been a fan of them believe it or not back in junior high i did buy again from probably one of the mailer companies i had their first two albums uh peace cells and uh whatever the one with the white skull and the hooks through its mouth or whatever i bought them um, just because i thought peace cells was a cool song but I, I never they never really grew on me at all yeah their albums are uh, kind of diversify man i mean you can listen to a, some of that earlier stuff, man, and some of the later stuff, and it sounds like almost a totally different band besides Dave Mustaine's voice. I mean, they change the tempo in a lot of their songs, man, and their style. You know, even the mainstream uh, sound, which is uh, it's one of my favorite albums, too, by them. Dad Gummit, I can't think of which one it is. But, Rust in Peace. Um no, Euthanasia. Euthanasia, yeah. Yes. Well, there, yes. this song, and Symphony of Destruction, put them back on my radar because they were finally doing just metal instead of speed metal, or so I thought. And then they even had another one. I saw them perform on a talk show or something. I don't remember the name. It's not on this album. Or I would have recognized it. And that was really mainstream metal, too. So I was like, holy shit. Uh, Risk. Risk breadline, man. I bet's what you heard. That's okay. the album I was trying to think of. Risk. Okay. Th this album was yeah. much more like their original two to me, from what I remember anyway. Uh, much more along the lines of, no, nah, I wouldn't say thrash because it really wasn't on this album, but it was definitely heavier than Extinction or Count or Countdown to Destruction and stuff. Or just yeah. more out, more out there. I don't even. I wouldn't even say harder. It's just weird, man. It, this this album was weird uh, for me. Yeah, heavier than your mainstream, but not not uh, not uh, Slayer, Rain and Blood. You know. Yeah. In the middle somewhere. Yeah, yeah it is. You're right. Um, okay. Well, what we're gonna uh, do, guys? Go ahead. We're going to rank these songs, our least favorite to favorite on this Countdown to Extinction album. Okay. Darren, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, this album was their most commercially successful um, and the follow-up to one of their better-selling ones, Rust in Peace. Uh, that, have, you know, that seems to be not necessarily the consensus, uh, you know, their best album, but it was, uh, it is a fan favorite. Um, 
I think this album had the same kind of effect that the self-titled or black album from Metallica had for fans where with the commercial success, a lot of the original fans of the band kind of crapped on this album where it brought new fans in because of the success of uh, Symphony, right? Um, overall, I mean, I think there are some tracks that missed on this uh, on this album for me. It's kind of a mixed bag. There's some really good tunes. And again, some one, I th in my opinion, is horrible. The rest uh, are are good. Um, I mean, tolerable. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the albums from them that I've probably listened to the most that and oh, I think it was a 97 album and I'm trying to think of the name. Um, they have so many euthanasia. 99. Crypt, was it cryptic cryptic writings yes cryptic writings um from 97 okay. that has the song trust and use the man mastermind um those i mean this one and that album are probably the ones i've listened to the most from this group yeah uh yeah and risk is a more of a um mainstream type like this too uh, it came out in 99. It's pretty good. 99. Too. I remember playing Risk when I was a kid in the 70s. No, no, the album, not the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Megadeth album. Yeah, it's called Risk. It's got a rat staring through a hole and there's a rat trap on the other side, you know, with cheese. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild album covers from this band, too. Okay, now that we've teased Megadeth, Darren, how was your sit-down with Mr. Blaze? I I enjoyed it. It was a blast. How did that come about? You're seeing he's wearing the late act shirt, Steve Blaze, as he probably goes now. He can go fuck himself. It's Stevie Blaze to me. Um, Lillian Axe, a unbelievably underrated uh, they came out, what, late 80s, early 90s, towards the end of the run of the good music Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. I think the, uh, I think I, the self-titled album was released in '88. I think, and then and I suppose you were you were at a show then, right? The other night. Yeah, Sunday night. Yeah. So uh, how did you how did you end up doing a sit down and lunch or dinner? Uh, dinner. I mean, so after their show, right? Well, so they were the middle band of three. Um, <clears throat> so. After they were done playing and, of course, a little bit of tear down and stuff like that. And once the headlining group had taken the stage, a couple songs into it, uh, the band had kind of moved towards the back um, of the auditorium and um, were signing autographs by the merch table. Um, so I'd gone back there because I had brought um, their most current album, uh, from womb to tomb and I wanted them to autograph the because it's a gatefold album and all of their pictures and bios or whatever are on in the fold so I wanted each one of them to sign it um and the old so they did they were you know gracious enough that uh to chat a little bit shake hands sign some autographs um and then they had um towards the end of the last band moved out towards the front door to the theater and we're waiting for somebody or whatever. And I decided I wanted to go out there and get a picture. Um, so, and I hadn't gotten Wayne Stokely's autograph. He was the, he's the drummer and he was the only autograph that I was missing. So they said that Wayne was at a pizza shop couple blocks up it just happened to be the bar slash pizza place um uh, that i was at before the show uh so i knew where it was um so they said well if you want to walk along said, fuck yeah right i mean <laughs> I, I get an invitation from steve blaze if asking if i want to walk along with them um so i did we, uh we get up there 
and Wayne has already eaten and he's back in the green room at the theater. Um, but they invited me and my brother-in-law to sit and stay and eat and shoot the shit. So we did. Nice. Nice. Um, and then, um, at the end, they said they were going to go back. Uh, me and my brother-in-law weren't done yet. Um, they said, just <clears throat> come back in and ask for us and we'll make sure that Wayne signs your album and, so when we fi when I finished eating, my brother-in-law wanted to stay at the bar and have another slice of pizza. Mm -hmm. So I walked two blocks back to the theater, um, got back inside. Uh, the lead singer for the band was on the stage. And so um, I asked him if Wayne was still there. And he goes, yeah, come up here. Um, so I walked up behind the stage and he walked me out towards the back where the green room was in the building uh, across the alley. He would just walk in there and. Wayne comes up to the door and signs it, and I say hi to everybody again, and then take off. Sweet, always good to meet the boys. All right, so how they how they do? How was the show? It was good, uh, really good, right? I mean, let me ask you this: Did they make the mistake, in my opinion, of starting with a recording of Love and War instead of starting with Love and War? Um, so love and war was the second song. Well, all's fair and love and war was the second song. So they did start with a recording, but not of their music. I'm not sure what the recording was. Um, and then they broke into, I, I take that back. Yeah. They did that too. When I saw them at rock timber, they opened with some song I'd never heard of, obviously off one of their newer albums. And then they went into the recording of the intro of love and war. And then from the scream on, they took it over live. I just think that is a brilliant opening song and, and they don't agree with me, I guess. Yeah. They opened with hard luck um, from their self-titled album. Then love and war. Um, Stop the hate from psycho schizophrenia. Yeah. Uh, True believer from poetic justice. Uh, I Am Beyond from their new album, From Womb to Tomb. Ghost of Winter from Love and War. Yes. Death Comes Tomorrow from the album The Days Before Tomorrow. Then Show a Little Love off of Love and War. And then they, ended, then they ended with Misery Loves Company from the self-titled. So nothing off of Poetic for those two awesome ballads. Not the ballad, just Poetic Justice. Uh, no body, no body, body double, nothing off there. Nope, only Man. from Believer from Poetic. I, I, guess, I, mean, I guess if I were to go to them again, I would want them to be in the headline slot. So maybe yes. they can. Because I, I saw them at Rock Timber. They were like second or third on the bill. So short set. You just saw them, gave me that set list, their middle cards. I'd just like to see them with a full hour, hour and a half to fill. Right. And when I saw them back in 93, uh, that was off of the Psycho Tour. Uh, but they did play True Believer. I mean, they played quite a bit from uh, what I, from what I can remember. They played quite a bit um, from Poetic Justice, along with the Psycho album, and of course, they threw in um, well, they threw in Ghost of Winter, My Number, um, All's Fair in Love and War. I mean, they for the middle band there, right? Because it was some really heavy thrash band from Massachusetts. I can't remember the name of the group that opened. Um, and of course I had to sit through that. Um, and then it was Lillian and then accept was the headliner. Um, and that was, did with they bring Udo back now or not? Udo's back with them now, but when I saw them, it was the lead singer from Bangalore choir. Oh, he's good too, though. <laughs> he was fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so this is all over Scott's head. I just wanted to pick your brain on it. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, big, it was big, big part of our heritage with our music, Lillian Axe. So. Yep. Like I say, it was a, it was great to see them live again. Like I said, it's been thirty years, thirty-one years since I've seen them. They still, I mean, I've got a lot of video of Steve shredding on the guitar. I got, I felt kind of like a douchebag, but I videoed some of the walk up to the pizza just to kind of prove that I. I was walking I was there, and that, that happened, but <laughs> but I I didn't record the whole thing, but um, but yeah, it it was really like I said, it was really cool just to hang out, talk, 
Um, while we that's were always that's always next level shit. <laughs> that's so much more special than a fucking paid meet and greet or even a free meet and greet. When you get to actually hang out, you know our history day, and we've hung out with right. a lot of these lot fucking of guys. Things. It is so much more special because they're choosing to spend time with you, and right. that means and means so even, much more. I even made the comments that I I, I feel kind of like a you know, like a fifth wheel or whatever I had said. I said, I feel kind of bad. And the rhythm guitar, Sam uh, point event said, now's your time, dude, because this is your opportunity. And it's like, I appreciate that. I appreciate how down to earth you guys are. Um, you know, that you don't care that some goober is hanging out with you. Who's just kind of, <laughs> I, I mean, it was, I mean, Steve even called his son, like the moment after he ordered his pizza and sat down, he quick tried to FaceTime with his son, Jude. Um, but then his kid didn't answer. So he just called him on the phone. He goes, didn't you see me trying to FaceTime you? Or I mean, but it was, I mean, he was checking just, to make sure that you're seeing him as a real human being. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, just checking in on his kid to make sure that he did his homework and all that yeah. good stuff just to check in from the road. Cause he still has another like two and a half weeks on the road. And I, you see, and I've tried to get better with my judgment towards any of these bands or guys because you do forget that. And the, the older I'm getting, the more people I'm meeting uh, in the business that are in bands. It at first there's a little bit of that, hey, holy shit! But then when you talk to them or they're emailing you, or in my case, I called one of them, we bullshit it for half hour. I mean, it's you, you like. Man, these motherfuckers are just people, man. Right. You may not like what they and, do, but fuck, they're a good dude. You just don't know them as a person. You know, and, and back in the early days when they're, you know, a little bit more in their own rock star phase, they might have a little, you know, what, what the fuck do these people want? But I remember when I saw them in 93, I mean, they, I mean, this band should have made it bigger than they did, but had. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I, because I, I got to the fucking bar that they were playing at before they started char charging the cover. I mean, I got there fucking early because I wanted to be up fucking front. I had no idea what to expect. It was the first time I'd ever been in that bar. Um, I wasn't even 21, but it was an all ages show. Um, but I could hear them playing upstairs because it was kind of like they had an upstairs part for the band. Um, it wasn't part of the actual bar that you're supposed to go up into. But I heard them upstairs practicing. And so I went out to like the towards the front of the bar where you'd walk in and you could actually look up and see like the balcony looking over or whatever from the upstairs. And I said, play my number. And they kind of hung their head over and said, you know, our music. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and they said, come upstairs. But I couldn't find the fucking stairs to go up there. So oh, I, I would have had a chance to meet Ron Taylor back in 93 and meet them mm -hmm. when they were in that phase just because I knew their songs. Right. And that would have been killer if I could have hung out with them before the show. Uh, back then, but if I could have figured out how the fuck to get upstairs, I would have. But well, sorry we bored any of you people anxiously awaiting Dave Mustaine. But uh, cool stories are cool stories. Yeah. All right, Scott, guide our ship back to the right path. The um, the the stories that might not mean a lot to some, but mean a lot. You know, when you get to do it, enjoy it. So there you go, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're just going to uh, go through these songs, man, and rank them our least favorite to favorite, like we have been on all these albums. Uh, kind of a mixed bag. I didn't know what to think. I didn't even know if we'd wind up doing this one, you know, uh, because I'll grab one and they'll, if they don't know it, they'll check it out and we'll say, eh, let's go to the next one, whatever. You know, because there's no point in doing a review on here of an album that is going to be for Lois. No, no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Lewis, Lewis has flat out warned us in the comment, and he won't tell me why because he still claims that his comments are getting deleted. Uh, but really? he said, yeah, he said he will not watch any video we do involving Ozzy Osbourne. Wow. And I asked, I asked why, and he said, well, apparently I don't need to answer why because my comments keep getting deleted. So, I What? Know. Yeah. 
if they're hey not man, all, up, these, these, up. yeah these Nothing. bands ain't gonna be for everybody they're not even for all of us half the time i agreed to this solely because i love symphony of destruction and i remember they kind of took a turn towards regular non-thrash so i was curious so yeah so uh, right. yeah anybody start us off or me yep. one of you two I'll I'll go. I don't care. Um, right. Coming in at number eleven. Um, so there's there's three songs on here that have the conversational lyrics where he's talking to himself. Yeah, what is that? I don't know, but it, it drives me crazy. It's weird. Yes. Um, very. I mean, it's um, so the one that I like the least. I mean, all. My three least favorite songs all have the conversational lyrics. The one that drives me batshit crazy the most is Captive Honor. I think this is a very cringeworthy song. Um, I do, I mean, there is a cool line, a couple cool lines in there. One of them is, uh, when you kill a man, you're a murderer, kill many, and you're a conqueror, kill them all, and you're God. Um I think that's a cool line, but that's the only thing I like from that song. The rest of it, I mean, it just, I would skip this one, definitely. I, if life, what, what do you mean, life? I don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too, man, but that's, hey, ding, ding, ding. That's my number 11, right? Yes. Hey, that 11? I wasn't prepared. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Are you ever prepared? Not really, no. But I, I fake it pretty good. And, right. and there you go. And with these songs, man, there's really not much to get caught up in, to be honest with you. I mean, the in my opinion, the music's great on every one of these songs. And the only things that I would really have to pick at is the vocal deliveries, the lyrics, uh, the chorus. I mean, Megadeth is very, very just absolutely you know just foul on, on the instrumentation man their production is insane so but yeah i'm not crazy about that one either that's you know i'm about, i'm 50 50 on this album you know i don't really hate anything uh but yeah I, I mean that, that i don't, that I don't I mean, care for at all you know i'm in the same boat i there's not i mean I wouldn't say I hate any of this. Uh, just Captive Honor just drives me crazy. I mean, just. Yeah, it does. Me too. And the music, if it wasn't for their, you know, guitars, drums, man, it, it would probably be horrendous. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Well, this album for me was not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for a lot of this to be like Symphony of Destruction a lot of cool singing and and melodies and it and it really wasn't i ain't gonna go so far as to say it was horrible because i can't judge music that i'm not a fan of the genre uh, it's just not fair uh, just because i don't like a type of music doesn't mean that they're not good songs i guess but two of them are fucking horrendous to me uh and number 11 is this was my life he it's got the most whiny approach to his verse vocals in this thing that it's just nails on a chalkboard. Hmm. That's all I can say about that one. I mean, musically, this is a very good album. I will say it's a little bit cookie cutter, like every other eighties, early nineties thrash bands, whether it's Slayer, Anthrax, Metallica, whatever, it's the same. I mean, it just, no imagination in, in, in speed metal or thrash music, really. I mean, it, it was the three chords with the palm muting and 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 go. So, I mean, but yeah. that song, his whiny delivery, uh, because he can have an awesome voice. It's, it's just sometimes it's yeah. just he takes this irritating approach to where I just can't listen to it. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so number 10 for me uh, is the song Sweating Bullets. Um, <laughs> I do like the verse. I like the breakdown towards the end. Um, but, the, uh, but the chorus isn't my fave. I think, it, again, it has the cheesy conversational lyrics in it. 
Um, like I said, I don't like I said, I don't hate anything. Uh, Captive Honor gets kind of close to the the hate line for me, but like I said, but Sweating Bullets is just not my favorite. You know what that's about, right? Even though it even though it disturbed you a little bit that I put it so so early in the, in my list. Well, no, I kind of expected that you had done made the statements before, but you know what that song's about, right? Uh, um, have, you, have you ever seen the video? No, I don't think I have. He's in a straight jacket in a mental ward. You know, he's he's gone, man. Crazy. All right. Yeah, that's why. That's the only thing that would make it make sense. So there you go. Um, number ten. Um, it's okay. Like I said, the music, the riffs, man, the drums, you know, everything's good on it. Musically, it's ashes in my mouth. Yeah. What's uh, with that title? I, I don't know. I, I um, couldn't make heads or tails of what these songs were about. Honestly. I mean, he, I know you said that sweating bullets, you know, straight jacket video. It's about basically a schizophrenia, right? Or a schizo whatever yeah, you call man. That, that, that hear Go voices crazy. and shit. But yeah. he does that in like four or five fucking songs. I'm, I'm starting to think maybe that's just who he is. Maybe he's got a couple of personalities battling back and forth in the recording studio. And that's probably one of the reasons that he got kicked out of Metallica, man. You know, um, I, and and you know it. That's a very interesting conversation. You know, uh, I think they took pretty much all of his credits and stuff off that first album and everything, and they kind of yep. had a battle over that, man. And, hey, man, dude, that's one of my favorite. I don't know things. why you'd want to claim credits to any early Metallica music, but, yeah, if they stole it, they stole it. I mean, but anyway, you know, um, Megadeth is a middle-of-the-road band. I not this huge, you know, Kiss ACDC fan of Megadeth. I just like some of their albums, you know, and, and the albums that I do like, I don't, I'm not crazy about every song, you know, because I only have like a handful of their CDs, you know, five or six of them, give or take. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just an interesting band uh, that fell into my category, you know, Unlike Slayer, you know, I don't I own, I've never owned anything from them. I never knew what the big deal was for them, man. I never understood it. Just like uh, Slipknot and bands like that. I, I, oh, I just, it didn't, geez. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. So with Slayer, I didn't get it. Megadeth, I'm, but I know he's a real prick, though. I do know that. Uh, <laughs> Mustaine. So. Yeah, I've heard stories about this guy, man. He is an asshole, first degree, bro. But, um, yeah, ashes in my mouth or your mouth. Yeah, number 10 for me. <clears throat> okay, well, number 10 for me, sweating bullets. I do not like this song at all. Ding, ding, uh, ding. I did. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. Clean your ears out a little bit. Y'all were kind of cutting out a little bit, but really, I can okay. still. Yeah, I mean, not now. You ain't. You know, just the streaming thing. Every now and again, I'll catch a little gotcha. like a freeze, gotcha. and then y'all take off. So, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, Darren said about everything you can say about this thing that the conversational crap. I, I it's corny. It's irritating. It's I don't understand if he's trying to be some kind of, you know, fucking super genius and, and bring us something that we've never heard. It's stupid. Uh, but sing. Whatever. Yeah, just Jeff, sing the fuck. Jeff, God, man. Um, yeah, I, whatever. So there you go. All right. Number nine, another song that has conversational lyrics, and this one has sound effects from the, from the movie Terminator. Psychotron. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite. Um, like every, almost every one of these songs has its moments where it's, where the music is really good. 
Um, but again, it's the conversational lyrics uh, that turned me off with the Psychotron song. And does he have to grunt when he's not singing? <sighs> I mean, that was one of my notes, just just as a you know a note about the album. If he's not singing, he's grunting. I don't. Yeah, I, it's like it's like he's holding a shit in or something. I don't get it. Why does he have to do that? That's his forte, man. That's his. Uh, he's so angry sure. about, dude. Go to counseling. What the fuck? Yeah, he's very angry, bro. Yeah, I believe some of these songs he wrote are actually real about him. You know, I mean, think about it, dude. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, number nine, right? Yep. We're gonna go for some high speed dirt. Is my number nine. Uh, typical Megadeth song, man. Could be on any Megadeth album. Pretty much the same tempo through this whole song, which is very rare almost for Megadeth. They do usually stop and change up, you know, quite a bit in some songs. But this one here, man, it, it, it's pretty steady all the way through, but it's just... You make a death typical song, man. It's not horrible. The music's great. He gets a little too high on some of it. Uh, what you refer to as kind of whiny a little bit, but um, it's not bad, though. Number nine. Okay, my number nine, Scott, just touched on for number 10, I believe, and that is Ashes in Your Mouth. I Some titles just make me want to hate the song before I even hear the song. Um, but this one just offered nothing. I, I, I honestly, most of the songs on this album, with the exception of the top three, uh, I tried Darren's thing, which I find helps if I don't love a lot of it. I just give it a one through five and all, but three of these got ones, uh, just for different reasons. Um, yeah, most of mine got B ratings. Like I do the I do like A through F, like a like a paper, right? Like a school paper. And most of these got B's or B minuses, a couple of C's, um, except for the top three. Wow, you liked it a lot more than I did. I think there's three really good songs. Yeah, but you gave everything else a B <laughs> or B minus. Yeah. Like wow. I said, there's there isn't anything on here. I mean, and that doesn't mean it's a great song by any means. It just means that it doesn't hurt me to listen to it. Right. I mean, it's the, the ones that I find extremely annoying. They're the ones that get the D's. And I mean, I think pretty much all of mob rules got F's. That's the reason why I did a 10 out of nine and then 9.9 .9 and 9.8, because that album just blew a ton of ass. Right. I mean, I apologize if you guys can hear some yowling. One of my symphony has decided it, it's time to play. And she loves, Hey, look at my butt. Look at my butt. That was hilarious. Mine does that one. Mine does that a lot. So, hey. Okay. Yeah. Number. Right. No, it's it's me. Um, Number eight to you. Yes, number eight to me. Uh, eight for me. Um, Scott recently touched on this one. This is where I put high speed dirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I've got a chihuahua going crazy. Um, I think my my kid's over at her aunt's house, and uh, she should be coming home soon. That might be what's going on. I don't know, but yeah. anyways, I think there's two there's two faster songs on this album, faster than the rest. High Speed Dirt is one of them. Um, it's it's decent. I mean, so my notes are kind of kind of all over the place on this one. I have catchy and upbeat, but still dull at the same time. I mean, yeah. the topic in this song is skydiving, um, which I, I think is like one of the most unmetal things that you could be singing about, about skydiving and <laughs> crashing to the earth, right? Um, like I said, it's not horrible, <laughs> um, but it's just not – it's just not as good as the uh, as some of the songs, right? So, well, I guess you know, Darren and me is going to be pretty much about the same on this album, you know, because I, I that's about what what I give most of it to, man. 
the top three songs to me are absolutely awesome. But that's the only songs on here to me that are really, really, really great. Or to me, the rest of it's just typical Megadeth. So, all right, all right, eight to you, Scotty. Yes, you. You, Scott. Did you not? Did you not go, uh, Rob? I it went number you. nine was my last one, so it was Darren. I and went you. first, so I eight. My eight, eight, you, eight, so it's eight to you. Scott. All right. I'm having one of those days. Sorry, guys. Uh, Senior moment. We uh, we understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, number eight is architecture of aggression. We're going to come out with the machine guns. It's kind of like a um, one almost beginning, you know, um, great real foe. You know, uh, just heavy Megadeth song, man. I mean, like I said, there's really not much uh, between these songs, man, to pick at unless it's just something that stands out like to you guys with the speaking to yourself lyrics, you know, which one of them I couldn't stand, but one of them I actually love. Um, but, uh, yeah, just a decent Megadeth song, dude. Architecture of Aggression, number eight. All right, my number eight, I one of you touched on this, Captive Honor, for another one of his annoying talk section sections sessions I, I just don't get it i don't think i could ever get past it no matter how good the music was it's just so annoying i i just sing the fucking song right we already have hip-hop for that kind of garbage uh but whatever <laughs> all right uh number seven um this is where i put the title track countdown to extinction um i think it has a great bass line and a great bass solo but overall um again it's to me this is a typical megadeth song um it doesn't stand out other than like i said other than the bass solo um again not horrible by any means it's just it's just not as good as, the, as some of the others Ding, 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 man. Countdown to extinction. Number seven. And what he said is as good as I could have said it, man. It's a good song. The bass really stands out in this, like he said. And uh, the intro's damn good, man. Uh, uh, I heard that. Um, <laughs> Can you smell it, too? I mean, I, uh, but this is one of those mega man. <laughs> You know, songs where he does a little bit of talking, then he starts singing a little bit of talking. You know, it's not bad. He does a lot of that in their songs, man, a lot. Um, but that's my number seven countdown to extinction. Okay, and my number seven, I believe, was also mentioned by Darren uh, Psychotron. Uh, not a big fan of the movie Tron or this song. Um, <laughs> But, you know, hopefully one doesn't have anything to do with the other. Um, I, I can't offer a lot on, uh, on some of these. I put notes. Other than that, it's just another song. That's just not my style. All right. Uh, number six, uh, foreclosure of a dream. Um, I think this song lacks momentum. It has a plotting verse but it does have a catchy chorus um but again it's um just not as good as some of the others it's a standard megadeth song i said i don't hate it by any means but it comes in at number six yeah this is where i start lacking a little bit more um I think one of you guys has done touched on this one. This was my life, man. Yeah, I love the intro on this one. Which one? This was my life. Yeah, Rob shit on that one. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. that's one I ha I hated that one because he was whining. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, I mean, it ain't my favorite, but I do like this one. This is definitely, uh, and here you go again, you know, a typical Dave Mustaine in true form with songs like this, man. Um, just a, yeah, I kind of like his voice on this one. Uh, now when he hits that, that high pitch and he lets it hang, I like that. Now I know a lot of people don't, but I like that. Uh, I like the, uh, dun -dun 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 you know, they, they really rip it up in this one, but it's not no high speed song, man. It's just the bone cracking freaking, thing, you know, but yeah, man, not bad. This was my life. Number six. Okay, number six, and uh, for all you people who like to say, I'd like to see you fucking do it. <laughs> High Speed Dirt, man. If you're going to open a song with a solo, you better fucking be able to play a solo. This is the poorest excuse of a goddamn solo I've ever heard to start a song. It was unbelievably choppy, no rhythm or rhyme to anything he was doing. And it honestly sounded like someone who spent eight hours in their basement practicing to solo to get it just right and then went to the studio and shit the fucking bed. There should have been <laughs> cover ups and retakes of this thing. They left all the pauses and miss. It was fucking horrible. I couldn't believe this actually passes as a professional guitarist, if this is Mustaine or anybody else, it was a terrible way to start and just an average song. It probably was him. I don't know for sure. Was, it, and I, he's, I've seen him shred. He's good. This sucked. Yeah. I'm not saying the yeah. concept that they were going for was bad. The execution for being on a studio album where you have multiple takes is inexcusable if that's what they were going for. Yeah, That's and another thing, it wouldn't have mattered if anybody else would have said the same thing about it, dude. Of course, his word is the word. That's his band. You know, the power control stuff. You know you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Nicky said. Well, yeah, because he, he didn't have that in Metallica. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why they kicked him out. And then so he starts his own band, but had that same controlling aspect, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he was um, Number five for me, the both of you shit on this one. <laughs> I happen I happen to enjoy it. Um, ashes in your mouth. I have no doubts you enjoy ashes in your mouth. Uh, and I don't <laughs> enjoy ashes in my mouth. I enjoy the song <laughs> Ashes in Your Mouth. A lot of other things. <laughs> so I'll shit in both of your mouths. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like Chris Mount with turdy teeth. Oh, oh at, least, man. at least it's not. At least it's not semen in your mouth. It's yeah. just, you know, it's that's your yeah. Saturday night. Um, <laughs> oh. I I think this song has great moments from beginning to end. I mean, it's not the best song on the album by any means. Um, I'm getting closer to the songs that I that I enjoy. But I did like this song. Um, I mean, it's six minutes long, so it's the longest out or longest song on the album by far. Um, but I still enjoyed it, even though like normally I don't enjoy that kind of crap. Um, but I enjoyed this song. Okay. Awesome. Man. Okay, number five, right? Yes. And uh, I think somebody shit on this one, man, but I really like this one. It's foreclosure of a dream, man. This, this is if I didn't, they didn't I, shit on it. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Uh, I mean, it, I mean I've talked about it, but I didn't, I mean, it's the one I had liked right before. I mean, right above ashes in your mouth. So again, I didn't hate it. But. Yeah, man, I really like this one, man. It's, this ain't a group album for me. The more I go, the better I like it. Yeah. This is, this is a damn good Megadeth song here, man. Foreclosure of a dream. I like everything about it. I ain't really got nothing to pick at on it at all from front to finish. All right. My number five is the title track, Countdown to Extinction. 
Uh, not bad. <laughs> uh, my wife hates that when I do the Doug Hefferton. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's 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 getting a little better for me too here by this point in the ranking. All right, uh, my number four, Rob crapped on this one pretty early on. Uh, Scott's already talked about it; he liked it a little bit better. I think this was my life is a pretty fucking crushing song. Um, the yeah. main riff, I want to say that they. They had an older song called Phantom Lord, and the riff to this song, the riff to this song sounds like the bridge in the song Phantom Lord. Um, I like this song, right? I mean, my top three are the ones I really enjoyed, um, but this one falls right outside of the top three. I think it's, like you said, I think it's a damn good song. This was my life. Yeah, man, I like it too. Um, Next up for me, number four, Skin of My Teeth. And this is, this is a damn good Megadeth song. Point of order, Dean Ulick. Dean Ulick. It is Skin O My Teeth. Skin O My Teeth, then. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> you belong to me. Yeah, I've heard this one a lot, man. This is on their greatest hits and on their uh, Hidden Treasures album. So, they think pretty highly of this song, and for good reasons. This is one of Megadeth's better songs. Uh, great riff, man. Catchy. He sings it great, man. Good chorus. Everything, man. The lead, everything's good on this one, man. Skin of my teeth, number four. What was it called? Skin of my teeth. There you go. All right. Number four for me, Architecture of Aggression. Uh, I think you mentioned the bass riff in this, Darren, or Scott, one of you. Had it been uh, Scott. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's, I this grooves. Um, the, the, the Again, his vocal styling just kind of lets me down. But musically, I, I really do think this has some, some good shit to it. Yeah. Um, that was your number four? Correct. Yeah. Among it's my number three, Architecture of Aggression. This I, this song, it's a strong riff. Um, I think it's a typical thrash-influenced riff, groovy bass. Scott crapped on this one pretty early. I had to, I had to start a new column on here called Who Shit? Question mark because I'm keeping track of who shit on these songs. Because um, I wasn't happy when Scott shit on this one. He had this one pretty pretty early on. I This is one of their better songs on this album. This song kicks ass. Architecture of Aggression, number three. Okay. Well, y'all both shit on this one, and I don't know why. Uh, freaking Psychotron, man. Man, that's badass, man. That's a good freaking song, man. What did y'all have against this one? Yeah. Check it out. You know, you know, if Mustaine would have used that on that fucking high speed dirt, it probably would have sound better. Yeah, I kept all this old school stuff, man. Maybe uh maybe by the time my kids get fifty or sixty, it'll be worth something, man. Yeah, maybe probably. Story. Kind of like that. Is that the same reason why you have so, that light and butt plug behind you? Are you keeping that for your kids, too? Which one? <laughs> that red one. The red and blue light up butt plug. Yeah, that. The yeah, that, that's, that's actually my daughter's, man. It changes oh. colors. She said, here, put that in there. You got lights all over Yeah, I had that red one, Darren. Remember, it had the glitter in it, too. Yeah. I yeah. And it, it'll change colors. It's kind of cool, man. I've got lava lamps and every damn thing, man. I got so many lights, strobe I got lights. A lava lamp. Oh, it's going to blue now. You can't see it as good because it's dark. But yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Psychotron, man, freaking awesome song. That's that's that's. These are my these top three, man. I really, really, really like. Actually, these top three are my playlist songs on this album. So. 
Right. That's yeah, I'd, I'd have to here. say I have out of this album a side A of a cassette single for a playlist. Me too. I think we all know which one it is. Uh, number three, Foreclosure of a Dream actually got a two because it had a good chorus. Um, Catchy chorus. That's how yeah, that's what I yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, again, I don't understand how you can put out something like Symphony and then have 10 tracks follow that are nothing even in the same league. Uh, but whatever. It was designed for that, man. To have one good song on an album? I That's guess a so. shitty design. Uh, right. a, a, the best song on the album, I guess. That's why it was the single. Number two on my list. I Scott recently talked about this one, uh, so I know that I think it was his four. I think. Anyway, I think this, this is, again, I mentioned that there's two faster tracks on this song. This is the other one. I think it's a fun listen. It's skin on my teeth. Um, again, it's n number two. Uh, I mean, I think their their top three songs were the top three songs on the album, right? The first three, I, they're not. They don't fall in that exact order for me. Uh, but skin on my teeth. I I think this is a like I said, a fun song to listen to. Um, and that's really all I had in my notes other than that's one of the faster ones, but, um, it's a good listen. Okay. Number two, almost my number one. Hello me. It's me again. You know what I'm talking about? Captive honor. Yeah. Yeah. Sweating bullets, dude. Oh, sweating bullets. Freaking. All right. Bad ass, man. So you keep on thinking it's my fault. Oh, man. Freaking love it, dude. This is a rocking ass freaking Megadeth song. Always been one of my favorite Megadeth songs. I don't give a damn if he is in a straight jacket talking to himself. It is bad ass. Love it. Did you get the gong from the gong show on there? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. This is that's that's that because when I, I knew y'all started talking about it at first, I knew it was gonna wind up bottom on y'all's. But y'all missed that one, dude. That's a bad ass song. Number two, sweating bullets. All right. Side B of the cassette single that would be the only thing to release other than what they did release, skin on my teeth. This song I actually enjoyed. I thought, hey, this album's going to be pretty fucking good. Um, I was wrong. But this song is actually enjoyable. So there with Darren on Skin on My Teeth. All right. Number one. It's probably the more simplistic of all the songs on this album. Um the main riff of this one was on the bridge for Holy Wars, just reworked a little bit, one of their previous songs. But Symphony of Destruction, I mean, it's the reason why I listened to this album in the first place. I remember, Rob, on the road trip we took to Grand Forks where we dropped your brother off at his friend's house, and then you and I stayed up for like 72 hours straight. Oh, fuck, that's when we saw Stumpy. Yes, your, your girlfriend, you got the stump yeah, drop. Fuck you with the bingo hole. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got your first stump job from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but we, this, uh, this song had just come out as well as uh, Rest in Peace from Extreme. And we were listening to that song all weekend long. Um, driving by the golf course yelling four at people. <laughs> we should have got our asses kicked 12 weeks. Yo, I have said this to anybody who will listen. If camera phones and YouTube was a thing, then we'd be millionaires. Oh, God. <clears throat> that, either that or somebody would have caught our death on on. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. I mean, but for being up for so, and then we slept for like 24 hours straight once we got back to Bismarck. But yeah, yeah. Symphony of Destruction, awesome song. Nothing else on here is anywhere near it, like you said, um, as far as the way that song sounds. But uh, it's this is a kick ass song. Yep, yeah, I agree. Number <laughs> one, season. And a fucking rocker man from start to finish. One of the most famous speed metal, thrash metal songs of all time, man. Symphony of Destruction, man. A lot of people that don't even know much or anything about Megadeth or even know hardly any of their music, they know that damn song or they've heard it before. Uh, they, they hit it right with that one, man. At a time when... They pretty much needed to. Um, and damn, we like, give them a shot in the fucking arm, dude. And I'm so glad they did. Uh, like I said, like you said, that was the main reason I bought this CD. That freaking song. Uh, yeah, I like 50 50. Yeah, this album. For me, this is the best Megadeth song I've ever heard. Am I seriously going to echo that? Cover one ear. Cover one ear. No, you no. just echo. Hey, kill that. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem. That echo, man. That's bad. Or just ignore me. Vault chinny. Vault chinny. Vault chinny. Scroll to you. Scroll to Hang on a second. I'm going to pause it and see what happens. What are you talking about? Okay, we still like okay, going. We still like going. Mm. Fuck me, Rob. I haven't heard one yet. That's because you got That's your fucking you got music your playing. Fucking music. No, it ain't loud, though. Uh, all right. All right. I'm just going to turn the volume down so I don't hear myself. myself. Uh, yeah, perfect, uh, yeah, perfect song. Perfect song. Uh, uh, if he ever needed to prove that he was that worthy he of being be in... One of the most overrated bands ever, Metallica. This song did it. This is every bit as good as anything Metallica ever released. Um, and the whole reason I hold yet to this album is because it's awesome that song. Fortunately, the rest didn't really look right for me, but this song is a Well, sir. Well, sir. All right, children. All right. Jesus Christ. Right. We got some we shit got coming out. Some we coming got Bark at, Bark at the Moon. We've got. No, uh, no, 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 no. Not Bark. Uh, not Bark. We have no, no, no. Yeah, we got yeah, Alive got 2 and, and the four and solo four albums solo to make albums one album. One album. We got uh, Diary, Diary of a Madman. Mad Diary of a Madman. Bark at the Moon. Yeah, Diary of a Madman. Jesus, I hope this echo doesn't come through, but at least it's at the end. Um, all right. Anything to okay. add? Anything no. to add? Uh, yeah. One thing. <laughs> it's time to pick another CD. Y'all can say yay or nay, and I can probably tell you it's already nay, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. Okay. Unless you're uh, going to show me the black album, I don't want to see Metallica. Oh, hell, anything but that. Let's see. All right. Here goes another one. Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind. It could be Iron Maiden, Peace of Ass. Or still <laughs> listen to it. Okay. All right. Here we go with number three. Let's see if this works. I'm just grabbing, dude. Led Zeppelin four. <laughs> okay, let's go for number number five, right? Britney Van Halen Spears. Spears. I would do that one. Do that. What is it? What is it? Van Halen, Van Halen yeah. two. Two, Van Halen two. Okay. I'd do that one. I'd do that one. My favorite one, by the way. So I mean, yeah. 
All Damn, right. y'all hate All right. stuff, don't you? We don't like that don't heavy, like garbage, that heavy man. garbage, man. Hey, well, you don't... Know, you know, this Scott sold me on, oh, dude, I like, I like all the hair metal, metal stuff, stuff just like you, and yet he keeps coming out with Black Sabbath and fucking Iron Maiden and Megadeth. I do, too. I've got all that stuff. Look, <laughs> I'll prove it. This one right here would have been next. the hell is that pantera far beyond driven <laughs> saliva no 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 hey they were good live what are you talking about we'll go with van halen too so your brother's good live. live i wouldn't recommend them on this channel i'm going to i'm grabbing another one do you oh, consider see, that's, that's, that's much better. better. That's I would do better. that one. I would do that one. I've got more of this stuff than I do the heavier stuff, man. But it's like I said, it's that, just I mean, oh, there's second look what's after that. that one, but I would still do the first one. Oh yeah, see? That one, yeah. That one. see, it's just ain't in no particular order. Here goes another one. Well, it's a shitty album, but at least the band is the right stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just there. So I ain't organized. It ain't messed with. I said, I'm just going to grab, but this right okay, here, well, later on down the line, if y'all, if y'all ain't, if y'all haven't heard it, this is a transitional album for Iron Maiden. It's not the typical, uh, number of the beast type Iron Maiden. This actually has some tempo and some rock to it. But is, but is Bruce Dickinson Bruce singing? Dickinson yeah. Oh yeah. Guess what? Uh, did y'all hear about heard, Paul Dion? Yeah. yeah. yeah that, he was before he, he was before Bruce, right? Before Bruce, yeah, he's the one that done the first two albums. Yeah. Yep. But hey, yeah, man. Uh like I said, we'll just go through it like that every time until we hit on that. No problem. And uh All we'll right. go with Van Halen too. Just we'll get to it when we get to it. We got other stuff to do. So there you go. Are we doing, are we since this is, since this is the last week, are last we going to do a gonna trick or treat, treat album review? Album or, or, you know or what? Like, when is your, uh, when is your last night to actually Sunday. pull Sunday. that off? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday night. If everybody wants to, uh, if we want to do, um, the trick or treat album that night, man, I'm, I'm for it. If yeah. everybody can, yeah, it's trick or treat sounds celebrating, holiday. celebrating holiday. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, then this All echo's right, driving me crazy. Driving so crazy. until so next time, next time, thanks for watching. Thanks. You guys, want to hang out here for a minute?